Hi folks, Glyn Jewis here and I thought I'd put together a bit of a bonus video since the release of uh, Photoshop CC recently and the Creative Cloud uh, and also Lightroom 5 just to show you some techniques, some lighting techniques um, that I used to do but how I'm doing them a little bit differently nowadays since the updates have come out. So what I thought I'd do is first of all I'm going to show you one called the Never Ending Lighting Rig and I'll show you how I used to do it uh, I'm not saying I won't ever do it this way, but I want to show you how I used to do it in Photoshop. And we'll do it on this picture here, because this is one that I always tend to show this on, because it, it kind of works really, really well. Now, the picture on screen in front of you is the final retouch picture. I wish it was the out-of-camera shot, but it's not. It's the final retouch picture. Now, here's the out-of-camera. Now, you can see there's been a fair bit of retouching done here. Obviously, retouching on the people, on the floor, removing this paper here off this little uh, kind of like a lectern, and adding this lamp on the stairway here. But the never-ending lighting rig, I tend to show it to see how we can add lights onto these paintings on the back wall. Because when we actually did this photo shoot on location, which was a, a paid job, a commission job for a theatrical company, um, we didn't have the space, and we certainly didn't have the time to be setting up multiple lights. So then I kind of like turned myself over to use the never ending lighting rig when I got back in front of the computer. So here's how I used to do it. I'd add a blank layer and I'd get a brush. I'd make sure the foreground color was white, the opacity was 100% and it was completely soft. So hardness down to 0%. And then I'd add a dab just like so. Then once I'd done that, I'd come back over to the layers panel and change the blend mode from normal to overlay. It doesn't look like I've actually done anything at the moment, but now if I get my move tool, I can then drag this around and you can start to see you've got a bit of a spotlight. Now, if that's not big enough, you think you need a bigger light source, well, all you can do then is go to edit and free transform, and then you get the transform handles and you can resize it bigger or smaller, like so, and then you can move that around. And if it wasn't bright enough, you could just duplicate that layer, put both of those into a group, and then you can move the group around. And obviously, even though it's a group, you can still control opacity. So I quite like that effect. I'm not saying I'll never do it this way again, but what I'm tending to find is my workflow is definitely, definitely changing. I'm kind of rethinking techniques that I used to do and thinking of ways that I can now do them non-destructively and just a little bit more smart, I guess. So here is how I'm now doing the never-ending lighting rig um, in Lightroom 4, oh, sorry, in Lightroom 5, and in fact, you could probably do this in Lightroom 4. In fact, no, cancel that, it's only Lightroom 5, uh, and also in Camera Raw. So let's just get rid of that group there to start back to scratch. So, I'm working in Photoshop CC at the minute, and I'm gonna go to Filter and Convert for Smart Filters, because now I can go from here straight back into the Camera Raw filter. And this is, like I said in the, the video before on one of my podcasts, this I think is a game changer. Having the ability to go into Camera Raw at any stage in the retouching is massive. It's a really, really big thing with regards to now retouching. So here's what we can do. In this version now, the new version of Camera Raw and in Lightroom 5, we've got the radial filter just up here in the top left-hand side. So most people would think Let's just reset this back to zero. Most people would tend to think when they first start using this, it's a great way to add a vignette on your picture. And sure enough, it is. We can drag out this radial filter, reposition it where we want it like so, and then we can control the exposure, so go to the outside, darken down the outsides to add our vignette. It's a great, flexible way of doing it that way. However, here's what I'm thinking. What I can do with this now is, rather than using it as a vignette, I can create it and use it as individual light sources. So here's what I do. I just drag out a radial filter like so. So I'll put that one over that picture just there. Now on the right hand side now, while I'm in camera raw, we can see we've got this where it says effect. At the moment it says outside because I was using it to darken the outside of the picture when I was creating a vignette. But I wanna work inside because I want to brighten up the inside. So what I'll now do is now I've clicked that, I can use exposure to bring up that radial filter to brighten it up. So if you look in the top left-hand corner of the picture there, you can see it brightening. So now I've done that, I can do exactly as I did before with a never-ending lighting rig, move it around like a spotlight. I can also resize it, like so, and I can control the exposure, bring it down or up, and I can also play around with other settings here like saturation, shadows, and what have you. 
Now, if I wanted to add another light source, all I need to do is come over to the right hand side, click on new, and again, drag out another radial filter and position it like so. Control the exposure like that way there. So I can just keep building up and up and up as many lights as I want. But the great thing is, certainly when I'm using this in Camera Raw, if I click OK, when we go back into Photoshop now, we can see that we've got this smart object with the Camera Raw filter here. So if I just double click on that, if I wanted to change something later, I can come straight back in, click on the radial filter, and you see that you get these pins reappearing. So let's say I wanted to alter this one, I just click on it, and then I can change it on the fly. So that is really flexible way and a smart way to work. And I'm just loving this way now that I'm adding the never ending lighting rig in Camera Raw. But like I said, I can also do this in Lightroom 5 with the radial filter that's built into that. So that's one effect. And the other effect I want to show you is regards to this kind of picture here. Now, this was a, a commercial shoot for a guy called Michael Otten, who's a, a close-up illusionist, a magician, he's also a DJ. Uh, and to get this lighting effect here, that was done using the lighting effects filter in Photoshop. So before it went into it, it was at this stage here. So it's been retouched, a bit of smoke's been added, and before I went into the filter, render, and lighting effects just down here. Now, I'm not saying I'm never gonna use that filter again, it's just, it's another way that I can apply it. And this is the great thing I love about Photoshop and Lightroom and retouching in general. We're all different people. We all have different ways of working, different preferred methods. And what I always say is, there's no good and bad, there's no right or, there's no right or wrong techniques, but there are good and bad results. So however you like to work, it doesn't matter as long as you get the result you want. Now, this is another way now that I found that I could maybe add in this kind of concert lighting, this disco lighting, God, disco, that's showing my age, um, disco lighting, how we can now add that using the radial filter in Camera Raw or in Lightroom 5. So let me show you how we do it. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna do it while I'm in Photoshop CC, but this does translate exactly the same as in Lightroom 5. So because I'm in, Light, in Photoshop, I'm gonna convert this to a smart filter to give me that flexibility to change things later. Then I'm going to Filter and Camera Raw. So this brings me into the Camera Raw dialog box, which is exactly the same as Lightroom 5, except it's a little bit brighter. So now then, how can I add in these colored disco lights? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back out a little bit. So I'll zoom out so I can see a little bit more of the boundary going around the picture. Then I'm gonna to go to my radial filter and I'm gonna take the exposure right down here. But what I am gonna do is at the bottom here, we've got where it says color. So I can click on color and choose any color in here that I want this to be. So I'll go for this kind of blue here. Oh, we've also got feather. So when we're doing this, when we're applying these lights, we can control how soft or how hard that light is. And that's what I would have done also when I did the never ending lighting rig, because when I did that, I would add a very, very soft brush. Now when I'm doing it using Camera Raw or Lightroom 5, I'll just make sure my feather is right up at 100. So now then, to add these lights in, I don't need to click on the picture. I can use all this workspace around the picture. So I'm gonna click outside and drag, like so. And I can reposition that now somewhere around about there is looking good. And if let's increase the saturation just a little bit on that as well. And now I'll add another one of these over here. So I'll click outside the picture, drag it, and to add this nice, cool, kind of, sort of, very strange, mystical blue at the bottom of the picture, something like that. I now want to add a different colored light in the top left-hand corner. So I'll probably go for like a red light. So what I need to do then is come over to the right-hand side, click on New, and I'll change my color. We'll go for a really nice bright red. I'll click outside the dialog box, or click outside the picture even, drag it out, and then reposition it by just dragging it in just a little bit. And again, of course, I can change the uh, size, I can change the angle, I can change all kinds of different things by dragging on the outside of the boundaries of this radial filter. So I'll go for red in there, and I'll add one more new one, we'll go for new, and I'll change this one to, let's go for a bright yellow, something like that. Click OK, clicking outside of the picture, dragging a nice big radial filter there, and pulling that lighting in just like so. 
So you can really play around with that. And if you actually, actually, if you want to get rid of the boundaries here so you don't see all these dots, down at the bottom here, it says show overlay. If I just take the tick out of there, we can see the picture without any kind of distractions on it. But the great thing is, because I'm using this as a smart filter, I click OK, I go back into Photoshop, and we can see it's a smart object. The camera raw filter is there, just like it was before in the first one when we did the never ending lighting rig. I can double click on that, come in and make any changes that I want, because when I click on the radio filter, you'll see the pins show up and we can start moving things around. So there you go, it's just uh, something that I thought I'd show you because I'm finding with all these updates that are coming in with all the new versions of uh, Lightroom and with and Photoshop CC, my workflow is definitely changing. I'm kind of rethinking techniques that I used to do and looking at ways that I can maybe improve them, make them smarter and make it much more non-destructive, which kind of helps out with my retouching in the long run because we want to make things as flexible as we possibly can. So there you go, quick bonus video. I'll see you next time.